Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WGLNA Season 2 Qualifiers for the Gold League. I'm your host, Christian Toma. To my left is David Williams. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube, backslash WGLNA. And as always, go ahead and follow us on Twitter, at WGLNA, so you guys can stay up to date on what's happening in the community around you. And if you haven't already, go ahead and check out battleviewer.com for the mm -hmm. same Twitch chat and stream that you know and love, plus yep. easy access to YouTube, Twitter, match standings, uh, match listings, mm -hmm. and when we get into the regular season, fantasy. That's right. Speaking of fantasy, like David was saying, at the bottom right-hand corner on battleviewer.com is that fantasy button. So once the season actually starts on December 1st, you guys can click that. It's going to pop up the fantasy menu. What you guys can do is build your team to team of seven. They'll play throughout the night. They'll accumulate you guys points and points lead, uh, lead to tons of prizes. So you guys go ahead and make sure you do not miss out on that. We also have something new to integrate this year. David, want to tell me a little bit about that. This season, we're adding Vulcan.com. It's right. not up yet. But it's going to be really interesting. More chances to pick your lineups and win more, even more prizes yeah, than yeah. previous seasons. So be sure to keep your ear to the ground for more information on Vulcan.com as we get into the regular season. We're just throwing prizes at you guys this season. So hopefully you guys enjoy that a lot. Now, David, here we are. We are here. We are at season two. There's a little bit of changes going on. But how was your break? It's good to be back. Ah, uh, you know, it's a nice little relaxation, but I'm ready for some more tanks. Oh, me too. Me too, buddy. Indeed. So let's talk about real quickly some of those changes you guys can be expecting. 754 for season one. That's out of here. No more 754. What we've got for you guys is the 768, and this is going to integrate Tier 10 tanks, ladies and gentlemen. So, on two teams, we'll be battling off against each other. Seven players on each. They have up to 68 points possible for their tier choices. They must have at least five tanks from Tier 10, and the rest can be picked from 8 to 10. There are two sides on a map. You have the attackers and you have the defenders. Now, the attackers will win if they can either, one, successfully cap one of the two enemy bases in the time that is given to them, or destroy all enemy tanks while having at least one surviving. The defenders will win if they can successfully defend both of their cap points while uh, surviving the full amount of time, or they can destroy all enemy tanks as well. Two teams will fight on two different maps, each having an equal amount of time to attack and defend. It is the first of five will take the match. Now, if at the end of eight battles, it is all tied up four to four, a ninth and final tiebreaker battle will be decided on a third tiebreaker match to declare the victor. Now, speaking of maps and how that works, David, why don't you tell them a little bit about how that whole system goes down? So the map selection process works the same as last season, but if you're not familiar with that, there's a coin toss between the two teams to figure out who, uh, who starts doing map bans first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After that, they both ban maps one after another, until there are only two maps left. The team that won the coin toss gets to choose the map that is played first, yep. and the team that lost gets to choose the uh, side that they play on, whether they're on assault or defense. Out throughout that entire map pool, there is Himmelsdorf, Steps, Ruinberg, Lakeville, Mines, Ghost Town, San River, Ooh. Prorovka, ah. Cliff, and Let's Murovanka for the qualifiers. Yeah, that, 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 again, this is the rules right now, ladies and gentlemen, for these Season 2 Gold League qualifiers that you guys are about to witness right now. So, just over a week ago, 48 teams uh, all got into the Gold League qualifiers, and now only four remain, and they are battling for just three spots in this next upcoming season. And that's what you guys have tonight. For the four teams, we have Yo, Ping999, Caller Wanted, and TBD, who is back from last season. Uh, so I'm excited to see some of those guys. And the order of matches will be this. Up first, it'll be Yo versus Ping999, followed by Caller Wanted versus TBD. Our third match will be the losers of match number one, facing off against the winners of match number two. And finally, the winners of match number one, facing the winners of match number three. So four matches for you guys tonight. And possibility of five, right? Because this is a Possibly double five. elimination The bracket. double elimination format, the team that makes it through the winner's bracket hasn't lost yet. So if a team comes yeah. out of the loser's bracket and beats them, now well, they have to beat them one more time because they've only been eliminated once. That is true double elimination. Very rare sight to see these days. Yeah, and you guys get to see it here right now. And again, it's going to be exciting to see what these teams can do with this new format, with these Tier 10 tanks integrated in. Now, David, out of the uh, four matches that we have for you tonight, which is going to be your highlight match? I mean, it's so hard to pick because we don't know what the heck is going to go down. 
Well, you know, for me, I'm I'm not much for an underdog guy, so I'm just going to have to stick with my guns regular. I want to see sure. Yo versus Peng 999. Yeah. These are two teams that I don't know a whole lot about, which is a little bit strange for me. I think mm. a lot of these people are coming from Clan Wars now that Tier 10 is open. Yep. And uh, I'm, how they made it through, I'm interested to find out, see what they've got, yeah. and maybe show us a little bit more about this format. But every match has its own kind of flavor to it. Uh, in the other match with TBD, we have some old familiar faces coming back between Felix, mm. uh, Mr. Man, Morphic, and Veg. Yep. from last season. Uh, we could see some veterans trying their hand at this, but they are in the loser's bracket, so I'm still going to have to go with Yo and Peng 999. <laughs> sure. Now, uh, for me, I'm actually I'm actually excited to see our second matchup, uh, Caller Wanted versus TBD. The reason uh, is because I think there's so much more on the line for these guys. Now, uh, Yo and Ping 99, they're guaranteed That's in true. the Gold League. They're in. But uh, TBD and Caller Wanted, one of them is going to go home, so I'm, gonna, I'm excited to kind of see them, both of them just going for it giving all they got because they want that chance to make it in to this season. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about to begin. It's about to go down. The new season with the new format is right around the corner. But before we forget about the old, before we just throw the 754 season one in the dust, let's take a look at Comps and uh, Noble and their interviews. They were our season one champions. Let's take a look at that. I'm Ben, also known as Comps, and I'm the team captain of Noble. So our team came together from our the previous core of our old team, which was the Cunninghams, and the transplant from uh, Isle of Lamp. And we have meshed together and have become Noble Esports. The meshing was rough early on. I mean, we had two different personas. They were more uh, YOLO-esque and not very, how can I put it, professional about things. Uh, while the Cunninghams were a lot more structured, uh, we had a lot more experience, so bringing them on board was a challenge, but it worked out well. If I could go back and do things differently, I would have put a lot more time in for practices early on during the season. I think it took us too long to get to where we were at. We had a difficult early season uh, with high voltage and elevate uh, in our first three matches and I don't think we were as ready as we could have been for those. We first started to hit our stride, I'd say, after the Elevate match, because that was when it really sunk in that things needed to change. And after that point, it was just a lot more work, and I think the results showed. My role as a captain is uh, less of a player and more as a, a manager, I'd say. I think what drives this team is egos. We have a lot of inflated egos, and uh, they want to win. So I have to sort of make that happen somehow by structuring them to be as productive as possible. We've shown that we can make it, we can make it here. We have put in a lot of work, a lot of prep. Uh, so we're confident that you know, we, sh we should win tomorrow. Our main goal as a team, I'd say, is to uh, be the best in not only North America, but also the rest of the world. To our fans, I'd like to say uh, thank you for the support. I mean, you guys have supported us since the beginning of the season, and uh, we're happy to be playing for you guys in the finals. Anything I like to send my competitors would be good luck and have fun. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Spoken from a true champion. That was Comps from Noble, our season one champion. So congratulations again to them. And that is what these teams are playing toward. That is the cream of the crop. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the WGLNA. I'm your host, Christian Toma. To my left, you know him, you love him, David Williams. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube, backslash WGLNA. And as always, go ahead and follow us on Twitter, at WGLNA, so you guys can stay up to date on what's happening in the community around you. And also, check out the question of the day. Which is nothing special, nothing unexpected, I should say. And it is, how excited are you for season two? Mm. I'm excited. Tier 10s, it's yeah. about time. Yeah, this is it. This is the end game fantasy of World of Tanks. I'm excited to see what these, uh, you know, the teams from the previous seasons, how they're going to kind of mold into this new season. And also, I'm really excited to see these matches up that we have tonight because I, I'm, I don't know if we're going to see crazy new spots, if we're going to see tactics we've never seen before with this new attack defense cap. Again, we are in the new 768 format for any of those of you who missed it. And you guys are about to see it. But right now, it's going to be Yo 
versus Ping999, our first two teams to face against each other. They are both in their winner, coming from the winner's bracket. None of them have lost a game yet so far in these qualifiers. Uh, both are guaranteed in the Gold League, but also they guys are playing for 5,000 in-game gold, 5,000 in-game gold for every victor tonight. So that's that's something else that's definitely on the line for them. Uh, now, David, you were talking about you know, you, this is a team you actually don't know too much about, um, You know, kind of a lot of new names for you. Is there anyone on either of these teams that you do know or are familiar with? Uh, there are people who I believe that I probably know and familiar with. Okay. Which are the type of people who uh, kind of change their name a lot, ah. and I, I notice some patterns <laughs> there. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weigh in and say I'm positive about any of that. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, we'll know. And as as the season progresses, we will be able to hopefully get that pinned down. But a lot of new names. It's gonna be a lot of fun creating either nicknames for these new people uh, or butchering their names, as uh, you know, I'm super good at. Um, but uh, one of the one of the things that I would love to talk about right before we get into this match is David. Just just quickly go over um, the main. Some of the main differences between, you know, we've got tier 10s and tier 8s, tier 9. I mean, we're in this new territory that a lot of people aren't quite familiar with. It's kind of a rabbit hole of a discussion, to be honest. Uh, I feel like one of the biggest changes is going to be the speed of things. Hmm. Tier 10s are slower. So anywhere you go, you're committing there hard. Huh. As opposed to the tier 8 lights, which had largely become the meta. I mean, an IS-3 isn't that much slower than... Uh, or faster than any of the tanks at tier 10. But when it comes into those light tanks, sure. that's going to be very different. So defense is going to have to worry about not over committing one way or another. Offense, once they get a pretty solid foothold somewhere, is going to be able to defend themselves a little bit more easily. Mm. It's a little side shot's not a big deal. But what it comes down to is a tier 9 versus a tier 10 is a somewhat fair fight if the 9 gets some early damage. Like okay. a T-54 versus a T-62A, the tier 9 and 10 Russian mediums respectively. They're roughly even. The 62A is better, but, sure. you know, you get a little bit of early damage in the right position, and a 54 yeah. can win. Now, a 54 lightweight, the tier 8 versus the C62A, <laughs> no. you've got to have a <laughs> lot of free time to really pick on them before you get there. So, it's it's very different uh, numbers. Hit points, damage per minute. Uh, okay. We're adding another minute to the uh, overall time Timer. of the battle to compensate for the more hit points. So, uh, Best answer I can give is we are going to see very soon. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to find out as our first match for the Season 2 qualifiers is beginning. It is Ping999 versus Yo on Ruinberg. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our new tanks. So, looks like for Ping999, we have an FV215B. A T110E5, actually two of them, two AMX50Bs, an Object 140, and an RU251, so that is one of the old Tier 8s that we're used to. Mm -hmm. For Yo, we have an FE215B, a T110E5, an IS7, a T62A, two Object 140s, and a T54 lightweight. So actually both teams electing to run with a 6 Tier 10 lineup and bring a Tier 8 light for Scout. Now, I don't think that's something we're going to see a lot. Okay. But on certain maps where early vision determines everything, like this map, this will be one of them. Oh, uh, it looks like there is a problem might be at DC, so we're going to be heading back to the garage right now, getting back into the match as soon as possible. That, but bringing up that point, that was something we were going to be talking about. Was you know, We talked a little bit earlier before the show started about seeing a, uh, five Tier 10s and then two Tier 9s. But we saw there nine Tier 10s and a Tier 8 for the scout. So tell the difference about that. So it's it's... I feel like, at least, it's going to be actually a little bit backwards compared to how 754 was. In 754, in a map where vision was critical, like Ruinberg, yeah. a lot of the times from top teams, we saw the double LTTB. Yep. They brought five tier eights and two tier sevens. Whereas uh, this time around, I think it's going to be the opposite, and then they'll bring one tier eight for the vision and six tier tens for, for the, the actual push, because the tier eight's got more of a scouting potential. There's no tier nine lights, right. so they can't run two of those. And that kind of opens up the, the vision that they need huh. while still having the muscle. So it's, it's kind of the same concept of what you're sacrificing and what you're gaining. It's just executed a little bit differently. Okay. So Ruinberg, uh, maybe Mines, although Mines is gonna be a very brawl heavy map. So yeah. actually Ooh, in that case, uh, you know, two tier nines isn't a bad idea. AMX 5120s. We get into each map in particular. Well, yeah, uh, we'll if we down. have Lakeville, that'll probably have a tier 8 light on it because you'll have to have one. There's it's just a lot of maps where you're going to need that vision to make up. So wherever you commit, you're not coming back from it very fast. Huh. But you do have more muscle and more armor to push through it. So we're going to see a little bit. I, I feel like the influence has pulled back 
a tiny bit from strategy because there are situations where player skill, your ability to angle armor and penetrate it's your shots, play. is going to come more into play at mm. tier 10 than it did at, at 8. Now, people have commented a lot, and we'll get back to the battle as soon as it's ready. Almost just, ready. Just waiting for the disconnects and get everything ready. Um, so what I was saying is, at tier 8, some people said that you know it's easy to penetrate an IS-3 with a gold round, no matter what. And that's, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can come back you to the You know, you don't time, like no matters. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, started. we are getting back into the battle. Ping 999 versus Yo. It's going to be the same lineups as you guys just saw, but take a look better because these are all new tanks. Tier 10s, tier 8s, and uh, no, no tier 9s in this one. Here we go again, still on Rupert. So here we have Ping 999 waiting to deploy, waiting for those last 10 seconds of the countdown. RU251 over there in the corner. It looks like the rest of their tanks are relatively close in spawn. The 50B has got a nice location to get down the zero line. Uh, not that that's the biggest deal at this point, but you would be surprised, honestly, how much a spawn location can matter uh, in, in, as the meta progresses. Really? Sometimes a race to a certain spot, especially on mines, is everything. Mm. There was a, a time when we played where it came down to what types of tanks you brought, how you can manipulate where your spawns are, but we won't get into that. New format is new, and I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> how that plays out. Peng 999, relatively standard opener. I don't see a whole lot of difference strategically on a lot of these maps. Uh, we've got them moving down the zero line into what we affectionately call the Delta Village. Delta Village. And we still have two E5s, which are nice brawler tanks. They're kind of a corollary to an IS-3 in some ways. Um, and in some ways to a T-32, they don't necessarily have the beautiful hull down a T-32 does because of the hatch they have on top. We'll get to that more as the season progresses. And right now, it looks like both of these E-5s from Yo are going to come right up the middle into the two enemy E-5s from Ping-999. Oh, already starting out now over by the uh, eastern cap, the number two cap you guys can see down in the bottom right-hand corner of your map. That has begun. But also going for the north cap, we have a push coming out from Yo, an I-7, a T-62A, and a T-54 all pushing up in the north, followed by two object 140s. The question is, how are they going to be holding down here? It looks like they're going for that shield. So the cap pressure now is on for Yo, down to 30 seconds, respectively ping. And uh, let's see how they can respond to this. More shots going out. Sheep taking 841 points of damage in that 5B. Now the rest of Yo kind of pushing up and forward, trying to lock down any members of Ping in this base before they can get back to the rest. Listen, the IF-7 is doing a good job guarding that T-54. And over on the side, we have a brawl between the other members. Look at that. Look, they lost that loving feeling going down to Reaper. Now you 2 one picky up that kill. That's a tank already pumped for Yo. And Yo is pulling left and right. Fluky picking up another kill on that object 140. The brawl going up and the resets on the uh, base are being amazing by Ping 999. Sheep taking some more damage. Now dropping down just to below half. Tasty pastry. There's the first kill coming out for Yo. More battles going on in the village. It is now a 3v2 over here on the northern side of the map. It looks like the T11 is going down for Ping Bobby. Surrounding him, it looks like we have the object 140 picking that one up for Yo. Sheep now just doing his best to hide. Flugie taking a big chunk of damage there, and the rest of the members for being coming across trying to help him out. Flugie doing a great job getting on that cap, doing the resets. Major trouble is in trouble in that IS-7. One more shot, and he's gonna go down. But Flugie is really low himself. Flugie gonna pick up that I-7, and just four members remain now for Yo against the five for Ping 999. Sheep still staying alive. Tasty Pacer taking some damage there from that 50B. There's another good chunk. Bobby's going to be going down. Tech is going to pick that one up in his 50B. And it looks like Yo will be falling here. Ping at 999. Still has five whole minutes to pick up this match. Sheep is going to get another kill. And with just Tasty Pastry alive, this will be over quick. Fluky coming in. Looks like he might be going for the ram here. Let's see if he's going to get it. Goes right into it. Fluky gets the ram damage, it looks like. And that is going to be the first victory going over there for Ping 999. Congratulations to them. And this is it, David. We have gotten it. This is season two. We have the T, uh, the T10s now. And what what are some of the things you saw? Because we talked about how important it's going to be looking at these teams. They're, they're really opening movements is going to kind of dictate the match. Is that what you saw there? Um, somewhat, I mean, once they committed to where they were going, they obviously didn't move back and forth, but that's not, in with the strategies that played out here, that's yeah. not particularly different than how it played out at Tier 8. Okay. So the biggest thing that I noticed uh, was just a little bit of experience coming through. It's a very standard mm -hmm. strategy we saw from Tier 8. Nothing has really changed. Right. When, uh, when Yo was able to push through the north, they had a moment where two of Ping's E5s were relatively isolated, 
their own E5s were in the sixth line in the south. They got swarmed by 250Bs or RU251, a number of tanks. There's a strong overmatch in the south, mm -hmm. which means there's a strong overmatch in the north. Sure. And they needed to make sure they got those two E5s in the north to secure their win. When you do that northern push, when you come across the top, if you don't clear out those buildings yeah. or make everybody attempting to support those buildings die, right. one or the other, them or everybody else, uh, if you clear all that out, then you can then defend that northern cap from the defense trying to stop you. Okay. Well, so you kind of flipped it on them. And they didn't execute that. And that's what. That's all it came down to. It was very, very normal, very uh, standard. Okay. They got the response they wanted, and they could have perhaps closed it out. They just didn't do it. So now, uh, looking at the the TH that they brought, uh, how do, uh, do you feel like that both teams utilized them correctly? Was there uh, something you would have done differently as far as where they sent those that that, that vision? There's uh, there's little way to use those incorrectly. I'd say that uh, Ping ended up using theirs a little bit better. Okay. Gary two five one got in more damage overall. Two shots, one kill on uh, on one of the E fives that was there, hmm. and the Chai sniper, which is the the name of the T fifty four lightweight there. He just pretty much got annihilated. He had a one shot in, but he's kind of a lead scout in that whole situation. So both of them pretty much being used uh, as you one would expect. That's good. Um, highlight of the match would go to Sheep with Zephy 215B play wow. there in the northern section. Uh, I believe he was with the two E5s as well. Um, and he had three, 35, 68 damage overall, Woo. which lets you know would have put him somewhere in like the top eight of damage. Overall, <laughs> all of WGLNA <laughs> to this is, date. This is the beauty of so. tier 10s. The damage will be real. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our second battle of our first match of the night. Ping 999 versus Yo. Ping is up 1-0. to zero. Let's get right into it and take a look at now what we've got for our tanks. Right now for Ping 999, we have Nephi 215B, two T110 E5s, an AMX 50B, an Object 140, and two T55As. So mm. roughly the same li a lineup with swapping out 150B. For Yo, we have two E5s, T62A, two 140s, a Batshat 2510, and a T54 lightweight. Now, I expect to see a lot more of the uh, 25 ton, because there's a number of Batshats. Oh, okay. The medium, the Batshat, this is what I've always just known as the Batshat itself. Uh, there's an artillery that shares the same name. We'll get into that if we see it. <laughs> but as of now, that's the tank I expect to see. It's uh, somewhat equivalent to an AMX 1390 on a whole lot of supplements. And it's never skipped leg day. It is <laughs> it is a disciple of the Hall of Broden. Oh, it is mm. beast. It's a medium tank upgraded from a light tank. It has five shots instead of six. Oh, got to we'll touch back on it, action kick We've got damage going on. Major trouble taking a shot, but also that T11 for Ping also taking some damage as well. Looks like Yo is going for the same strategy, but actually putting more pressure here in the north. Major troubles now dropping below half. He's got to be extremely careful there. And nice shots coming out from that uh, 5B over there for Ping all the way down to this northern cap. They do have pressure, though. They being Yo, putting at least three members on that northern cap. Down to 19 seconds here. Shots coming from Fluky. Here comes Tech. Sheep go around for the flank. Let's see if Ping can make it in time. 13 seconds on the clock. Tech looks like he should be able to get that reset. Tasty Pastry trying to stay alive. Lost that low and feeling 405 damage to that 62 a One or two more shots. He's going down. Tech, though, getting blown up as he comes around the corner. Uh, over 1,100 points of damage there in that 50B. He does get the reset, though. Gonna make the clock go back up to 27 seconds. Shimbo getting the kill. Tech picking up another one. That's a double kill coming out there for Ping. A beautiful pickup as two tanks drop there for Yo. Tech looks like he's extremely low, but before he goes down, Shimbo taking down major troubles, and Tech is still alive. Finally, we have a Team 4 lightweight taking down Tech. Reaper, though, gonna find another one, gonna respond by that, and just three members remain for Yo. It looks like they tried to do something, and it just did not work out. Fluky taking down Bobby, and it's just gonna be Chai Sniper and Fulcris gonna be remaining there for Yo. Ping 99 just gonna clean up these two remaining tanks. There goes one Chai Sniper going down by Reaper, and finally that T11 remaining for Yo. Two more shots. Sheep's gonna finish him up from the back in that 55A, and that was a lot cleaner. Pick up there for Ping again, increasing that victory now two to zero against Yo in the season two qualifiers. Now that did not that did not work out. Obviously Yo did something different. They didn't split their forces. They decided to push all in the north. They went past the, you know, we talked about dealing with those those enemies in the village. They did a little better, but they still kept those guys back on cap and, and they suffered for it. What that comes down to was simply getting outplayed. Yeah. Mm. Most specifically, getting outshot. Okay. The 50B from um, Ping 999 there, the Technos was his name. He was able to drive directly onto the cap. 
He took about 800 damage as soon as he rounded the corner, which is uh, roughly about the amount of the three people that were there. Kay. But there were another three that were in the uh, adjacent area that could have fired and pinchered from both sides. They took the shots. All three of them missed. And oh. those were kill shots on a 50B. Mm. And that would have been it. That's they really it. needed to have eyes on him coming down to reset the cap and okay. stop him from even getting there, forcing the people near them in that little outcropping in the north yeah. to actually try and peek around it and snipe on the people on cap. Okay. It's a tricky game to do, and they had the right positions. And with tier 10s, it's a little bit easier to do than it was at tier 8. So they're roughly in a strategic deadlock. It was mm. almost fair, especially considering Ping had set two T-55s around. around against one bat chat. So sure. there was sure. a, no, a numerical advantage. And really, uh, that kind of uh, negates the defensive situation. But what it comes down to is um, just missed shots yeah. and not focusing which on the right so, Which is such a right bummer, because I mean, if you get down, like you're saying, with tier 10s, we just have we see so much damage. And so each and one of those shots accurate. is, are they? They're, they're by and large more accurate, which hmm. is what I was going to get into, the differences between uh -huh. trying to penetrate at tier 8 and tier 9, or tier 10. Okay. Um, we can, we've got a moment to rehash it now. People were saying it's easier to penetrate. Yes, if you hit, but the guns are less accurate. So and they take longer to aim. <laughs> and you're sending them flying most of the time because that this is the pro league. And you don't have time to sit there and camp it sure. and make sure the shot you know, really yeah, focuses most of the time. You do it when you can. But at tier 8, I honestly feel like it's easier to penetrate at tier 10. Really? You know when you can and when you can't. And Whew. the shot is going to hit where you're shooting at. Especially in T62s, the, like the Russian mediums. Yeah. So... Uh, my opinion, it's the opposite, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just contrarian. No, not, not at all. David, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Things are changing. We're getting ready for our next battle. Ping is up 2-0. to zero. We're switching sides. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. For Ping 999, now on offense, we have two IS-7s, two T-62As, an Object 140, a Bat Chat 25T, and an RU-251. For Yo. Two FE two fifteen Bs, two T one ten E fives, an object fifty or an AMX fifty B, an object one forty, <laughs> and a T fifty four lightweight. I really like uh, both these selections. I think these are the two of the more likely tier eight lights we're going to see. Okay. Uh, the RU two five one. The heat round is kind of better. It's more likely to penetrate if you're hitting a flat spot, but the huh. T fifty four lightweight. Uh, is more likely to penetrate through the sides, through tracks in particular. So different kind of flavors of the same thing. Oh. More DPM on the RU-251, if I remember correctly. Um, interested to see kind of the, the preferences and differences between the two. Ping 999 spreading out across the southeast, running smack dab into major trouble. This is going to be a more difficult strategy to execute on offense than it was in the past, and we could very likely see a shooting gallery with that match. Wow, here we go. Explodes. Sheep getting lit up. 1,100 points of damage, a couple more shots, and he's got to be careful or he will be going down. There it is. The FV 215B, or just a 5B, we're going to call it, taking down Sheep, and already one tank going down for Ping. Yo, starting off with a nice advantage here. Now Major Troubles and Tasty Pastry sitting in this back corner down in that K-Zero line, as you guys can see. Just going to do uh, wow, a little bit of damage there as Ping is now retreating, knowing that they cannot push this anymore. Fluky, and then Object 14 taking a little bit of damage there as, as well as Shimbo. And Tasty Pastry, though, taking some in return. Fluky going to be dishing that one right back to him. Uh, but it looks like Ping has decided to regroup as they have lost a tank. And now, David, uh, how much you know is it more weighted in in you know tier tens than it is in you know, tier six, seven, and eight. If you lose a tank early on, or or is it pretty easy to still come back? I'd say it's it's relatively even, uh, but I'd say it's probably easier to come back in tier ten by a okay. little bit. We'll see more as that shakes out, but right oh, now, man. relatively even. Yo is just going to continue that pressure. They know they've got Ping in position where they are lower in health. They're going to try to go ahead and capitalize on that. The IS-7 for Ping getting focused on now by two members from the front, from the back. One, a couple more shots, and he'll be going down to 1,500 points of damage there. And there it is, Chai Sniper going to pick up a kill. Now Ping only having five members remain. It looks like this is not going to be good, but Reaper taking down Tasty Phase 3. He's going to do his best to try to claw his team back in this one. Technos, though, getting surrounded. Looks like another IS-7 now falling for Ping, the 5B taking that one down as well. Reaper on the run. Looks like he just got tracked there. 370 points of damage, and Fulcross is going to finish that one off. And now 62A, Shimbo, and Fluke just remain there for Ping. <laughs> Andre Pan's going to pick up Shimbo, and looks like Yo is going to pick this one up. Their first victory of the match is going to be going over on to defense. Where is, <laughs> where is that 62A? He's just hiding 
in the city. Not yeah, much a little he can bit hide of from. Fire from the middle into that southeastern fight, and then he pretty much bugged out. Yeah, I'm out. Buying time for one reason or another. Uh, you know, personally for me, we uh, we always tried to last as long as possible. You know, there's a chance that this can still affect enemy morale. If he manages to do some crazy stuff, take sure. out two or three okay. people, yeah, it it can have an effect on the match, and it can be a positive effect for him. Um, other than that, you know, there's more time for people to talk, figure out what went wrong, uh, and then you just just kind of the fun of it. These were honestly some of my favorite experiences when I actually got to go one B team. You know, it's like <laughs> sure. yeah, anything I do here team. is awesome. I can't fail because we're already <laughs> all yeah. dead. Yeah, you so have like a freedom of that. It's basically just time to show off skill. Sure, here we go. Uh, taking a, a good amount of damage, but doing some in return. He just dodged a shot barely there, which might have been the end of him. Another shot from Tri Sniper picking up another kill, and that is Yo claiming their first victory here on our first match of the night in our new 768 format, David. Uh, now, looking at what we kind of saw there, Ping rushed over to that uh, southeastern corner, uh, sending most of their team that way. But we we had, what, one tank, I believe it was, from uh, Yo, and that, and that shut them down right there. I mean, yeah, they got, got the spotting, and they had the rest of their, their heavies there in the Delta Village. And that is one of the bigger differences between 8 and 10. Not only is there more hit points and guns hit harder and more accurate and they fire faster, that, sorry, the last part is what's most important. Fire faster. They fire faster. Mm. The E5 has crazy DPM. I mean, we're not waiting like 10 plus seconds like you would in an IS-3 situation. If I remember correctly, it's 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 a little bit more than half of what an IS-3's reload is. So really? it's, uh, they're wow. cranking out a lot of damage. The Ooh. FE-215B is shooting incredibly fast as well. That's one of the main reasons they bring it. A lot of DPM coming out from those tanks. So you don't need the 5100 style tank huh. to put a lot of damage on target very quickly. Not to say a 50B isn't valuable, because it's one of the best tanks at tier 10 and has been for a long time. But that's uh, that's about you know roughly 1,600, 2,000 damage, very, very close with a, sure. a 50B. Sure. But down there in that southeastern corner, it doesn't matter. He's not getting anywhere quickly. Mm. And if you can hit track shots with a 215B, I know it's going to get hard to keep track of 50B, 215B, <laughs> all these letters and numbers. You'll get it. Everybody will learn together if you haven't already. Because it's right. tier 10, baby. We're, we got, we're at the top level now. We are getting to that end game damage, gold here. More in numbers. World of tanks. Yeah, just a lot more, <laughs> just a lot more ev of everything going on here. Heavier tanks, bigger tanks. I mean, I guess they're slower tanks. So we're actually decreasing in speed, but that doesn't matter because WGLNA they're doing a lot. WGLNA Season 2. A lot more, a lot more, more stuff. More, more stuff for you guys. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, now, one of the things, uh, also talking about the uh, 50B that we brought it up, when we watched the Pacific Rumble, we had a Noble versus EL Gaming. I yes. believe they got to do a yeah. fun little uh, scrim match Oof. there, playing the Tier 10s out, and we saw some pretty crazy uh, pretty crazy plays. But the 50B, that, that tank can ram, can it not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's 50 tons. <laughs> and when that thing Boom. gets moving, it can ram hardcore, especially if you got like kind of a downhill trajectory on something smaller and lighter. Go I mean, ahead. if he rams one of those Tier 8 light tanks... <laughs> <laughs> There's a good chance he can one-shot No him. way. If, if, if he gets the right tank at the right angle hmm. and it's already taking a little bit of damage, it'll be one-shot right, from where right. he's left. That is what, about full HP. That is what I want to see here, it's ladies possible. and gentlemen. But we're ready for our next battle. Yo versus Ping 99. Ping is still up 2-1. to one. Yo on defense, so let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks and if they can actually tie us up. I'll put it this way. It can do like 800 damage. And <laughs> I've seen it. Yikes. I've done it. Yikes. All right, so... Uh, Ping with two E5s, a 50B, 62A, an Object 140, two T55As again. So those are Tier 9s that they're packing in uh, to round out that lineup. Dropping the Tier 8, bringing a little bit more firepower in general. Yo, with two two 215Bs, two E5s, uh, a 50B, an Object 140, and a T54 Lightweight. So they're still sticking with their Tier 8 light meta. So it's uh, six tens and an 8 versus five tens and two nines. All right, so this is where we can kind of see uh, just that, that huge Ooh, difference hard between middle fight. the five and the nine. Love that feeling, that 5B taking some damage. Looks like the T11 going back, taking a lot more. Being dropped down to 1,368 points. Some more shots going there. A couple of them missing there for Yo. But he's just trying, it looks like he's just trying to survive there. He knows he's stuck, he can't get her. And the shots continuing to be let out Look from Yo. This, I love that feeling, taking some more damage. He's actually being able to, to return some 717 though, finally. Valve going down. Fulcrest going to pick that one up in the first tank now falling for Ping just like last time, but the positioning are a little bit different. The question so, is, will Yo be able to get out before Ping comes around the corner? We've got about 
one second. No, no we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about that later because we're just about to pick up once again oh, as Ping tries to go. cross the top barrier. Yo now stuck in the courtyard with not a lot of uh, not a lot of defense there, taking a lot of shots onto Ping, but not a single one hitting there. And now the response there coming from Ping 999 getting into that village. Bobby in that in the E5 doing his best. He's now getting kind of stuck there behind the corner, but it looks like they're rushing for him. They want to take him down. They know where he's at. Sheep taking the first chunk of damage there, and a lot more coming for Yo as they come to back up their teammate. The Optic 140, 292 points going into that E5. Bobby taking a lot of damage, but Sheep, a whole bunch of damage going onto that T55A. Boogie taking some damage as well, and here comes the fight. A lot going on. Mass chaos. The question is, Who's going to come out on top as Bobby takes down Sheep? Another kill there going over for you. Love that feeling. Getting a stream though. Technos taking the shot from across the courtyard. Picking that one up. Bobby going down by Shimbo. Full cross picking up Reaper. Left and right. Tanks are falling. But there are four remaining for Pink and five remaining for Yo. But not for long as Tasty Pastry gets absolutely annihilated there. Chai Sniper doing his best to try to take down Shimbo as he's crossing the corner. Major troubles at full health. Taking down full crust, actually taking Fluky down there. Chai Saber picking up Shimbo, and now it is a 4v2. Ping with just two tanks, but Chai Sniper might not be out of uh, out of the woods yet. In that 50b, one more shot, and he will be going down. Over on the side of Ping, we have Ton in that in his AMX 50b at full health there, probably reloading, getting ready to let go. I, uh, the 50b David has four shots. It does. So that's a little bit different from the 5100. Uh, it, where it had six, 50B has four, but they do more damage per shot. Honestly, I prefer that format over the six. Mm. The last two in the six, uh, it, you have to really oh. learn how to make sure they count. But there's a lot of situations where you just get stuffed and then you have a much longer reload. I believe the 50B maxed out with all the skills and all the rations and everything is roughly uh, 24 seconds. You're gonna have to bear with me if I get some of these numbers wrong <laughs> as we move into two. New format, new format. It has been a long time. <laughs> years since I paid a whole lot of attention to the details of tier 10. That hasn't changed too much, although I am I am pleased to see, especially in my recent games and watching this, that the age of the heavy at tier 10 has been coming back. I feel like mm. for a long time, mediums were just king. That was Not thing. a whole lot you could do about them, but the higher DPM on the heavies, the kind of the return to armor balance is slowly bringing them back, and I really, I really enjoyed playing them more than I have in a very long time. E5, 50B, I7, 215 all in particular, of course E100. Great tanks all around, really really digging the uh, the tier 10 balance of late. Well, here we go though, the clock now ticking down. Ping is trying to put any kind of pressure that they can, but the problem is all Yo has to do is pop out, take some shots, get those resets, and they'll be good. Three minutes and 50 seconds on the clock though. Ping can still you know, decide to push now onto Major Troubles, who is alone in the Delta Village to try to isolate him, making it a two on two there. But here it goes, 12 seconds on the clock. Full cross and Major now coming from the back. There's the first shot, the second shot, the resets are in. Now the question is, how is Ping gonna respond? The 50B for Ping getting extremely low, now dropping below half health, 740, a couple more shots, and he will be going down. Let's see if they're gonna finish that with a Major Troubles in that object, 140, it's just gonna take one. And that looks like that's gonna do it there for Ping, as Yo has three members, Ping, just has one Technos by himself in that E5. Nothing he can really do. He's going for Ram there, but stopped just short of them. Just going to finish off this remaining tank. And Yo is going to be tying this battle up 2-2 two to two here for our first match. That bounce. In our six. <laughs> See that oh, oh the, the troll bounces. Those are the higher skill moments I was talking about. Oh, okay. Nice little wiggles. All that stuff matters a lot more. That was one of the situations where uh, penetration at Tier 8 was actually a lot easier. If you're up directly on top of each other it's like probably that, gonna, probably gonna uh, that, to me it always felt like an easy penetration or it, you just got robbed and it should have penetrated and didn't. RNG. Uh, and in this situation, there's a whole lot more little troll bounce and wiggling. Mm. Now, in that match, I saw Fluky alone in T55A against two E5s holding for a very long time. Oh, wait, excellent, too, too long? Excellent play. No, 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 he was by oh, himself. Was, was there him? wasn't anything he could do. Oh. Everything was starting to decompose for his team. And he was able to hold and really keep it together. And really, it gave his team, uh, it gave Yo a lot more of a chance hmm. to come back in the fight. For a moment, it looked like Ping might not be able to pull this match out, but that uh, early opening they had really kind of shut things down. Or, uh, in fact, it's the other way around, is it not? Yeah, y yeah. yeah. Y Yo just picked up uh, that victory there, tying it up now 2-2 two to two against Ping. Uh, but, you know, looking at the, you know, the, the broadcast, which was, uh, I, th I believe in that one, one team brought nine, uh, uh, two, or sorry, five tier tier 10s and two nines. Yes. The other was, was six and then an eight. Yes. So the, the offensive team, 
which was Peng, brought the two tier nines. And Fluky was one of them. So he was in a tier nine medium against two tier 10 huh. heavies huh. and lasted quite a long time. Hmm. Now, uh, Peng got stuffed in the middle. We had that E5 that was kind of trying to drive down with a, another E5. He got lit up by all those tanks sure. down at the end of the F road. Now, Peng needed to either have faster momentum through the north or have a planned response in the event that that happened. But push up down the F road like that with two E5s is not necessarily a bad play on its own. Okay. It's kind of a standard from a long time ago. Hmm. And it still has some merit, but the E5, like we were saying, is somewhere in between an IS-7 and a, and a T-32, which we've seen before, in the sense that it does have a certain amount of depression that's useful, Okay. Uh, more than an, an IS-7. And its front it can be a little bit trolly, but a little bit easier to bounce, or a little bit easier to penetrate than the IS-7. Hmm. Um, but where it all goes wrong is it doesn't have that amazing hull down of the T-32, ah. because its hatch is like, Three feet tall <laughs> for some up. reason, and it's incredibly <laughs> easy to hit. Incredibly easy at this level with these pro players. Yeah. Very easy. Even if you wiggle, even if you twist your turret, it's you're probably going to get back. You're still going to hit it with the accuracy of the guns these days. Okay. Well, I, and now I think we're talking about just about that wiggling that happened at the end there, some of those bounces coming up. So, you know, when we see this a lot more, it's probably going to be more of, you know, less of the RNG factor and more of the fact that, no, this guy knows how to, how to position his tank. Yes. This guy knows how to angle his yes. armor. And, and that's going to be actually, I think, a really fun element as this kind of season progresses to really see that level of, you know, that next level of play. And it'll open up, uh, there's a lot of opportunity now that the DPM is higher and the, it kind of reduces the emphasis on autoloaders a little bit. Okay. I know this, uh, at this level with strategies and this number of people, everything kind of gets a little bit convoluted. Sometimes things seem counterintuitive. Hmm. Like you would think, uh, well, anyways, you need more damage on target, so perhaps you wouldn't want more autoloaders, but the DPM of the regular tanks with it's single shots so is pretty good on its own. Yeah. So you don't really need them as much. You're kind of a, a very isolated strike team as opposed to let's bring half auto loaders hmm. like you used to have to do in 754. Right. So it's a little bit tricky rebalance. And all I'm saying, the whole reason of this is that it, it promotes the positive trade stuff that we talked about. Huh. And this is getting into another rabbit hole of a discussion. Yeah, so let's it's get so into mine. Ladies, and <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Go. Ping versus Go. Yo. It's all tied up. Going into mines. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for tanks because mines is an explosive battle on its own. It's hard for somebody so detail oriented like me to comment on it's this. It's kind of glaze over that. When it's not complex, <laughs> when it's not simple. Sure. All right. We Ping have time. With an FE 215B, an E5, or sorry, two E5s, 62A. Object 140, E50, and the M53, M55. So that's ah. a tier 9 artillery. Okay. And a beast of one at that. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yo, with two E5s, two T62As, two 140s, and a T54 lightweight. So an entirely, oh, no, sorry, mostly medium lineup with two E5s for a little bit of muscle. And uh. they're probably picking those over the I7 or the 15B for a number of reasons we won't get into, because two E5s are shoving down right now. Oh, here we go, taking the first shot on the Texel, it's gonna be missing, and now Fulcross taking the bolt of that damage, 722 going through, and the rest of Yo is just gonna come in here. Looks like they turn their turrets over to Shimbo there, now Tecno's getting a lot of damage, and it's an all-out brawl on top. Fulcross, that E5, gonna be going down, Sheep, gonna be picking that one up, and that's the first tank falling of the game, and that is on the side of Yo. Chai Sniper getting extremely low himself, and the rest of Ping actually remaining pretty healthy, and just as I speak, Tecno's getting dropped extremely a little more shot, lost that level of feeling, gonna pick him up, but Ping gonna respawn, Reaper and Sheep, back-to-back -back kills there, going over to the side of the defending team, Reaper though, getting punished for what he has just done, Bobby, gonna try to redeem his team there, it is now a 5 for Ping against a 4 for Yo, Striker now in that 62A, now trying to just take down this E5, just trying to get him out of there, he is low, one more shot, and he will be going down, Striker though, getting extremely low himself, Tasty Pastry's gonna take him down, that object 140, but Striker, no, oh, just sneaking out of there on the side. Love that feeling. Take a shot from that M55. Bobby in the back, though, is still pretty healthy. Ping now. Set their sheep, though, in that 5B. Beautiful sniping shots on the lost that. Love and feeling. One more shot. He will go. be going down. But the E50 taking down Striker. Bobby taking down Shimbo. A one-for-one -one exchange going on both of the teams. Uh, lost that love and feeling, though, is so low. 28 points of health in that Object 140. There is not much that he can do because just a graze of a, maybe a friendly tank could be the end of him and Bobby almost just bagging up in him there. Tasty Pastry taking a shot from the side. A nice bounce there. And then we have a little bit of a stalemate going over. But again, stalemates generally will favor the defending team because it's up to the attackers 
uh, to either assault or take down both of those, uh, or all of the enemy teams before the time runs out. But, but David, let's kind of talk about what we just saw up on top, because it seems like mines, no matter if you bring tier 6, tier 7, tier 8, or tier 9, nothing changes. Tasty Pastry taking 757 points of damage there. Already doing a little bit back. So close. The M55. <laughs> yeah, Fluky just trying to line those shots up. Uh, I mean, if he, if he gets a hit, Onto uh, onto Lost. That is going to be a that's going to be a pretty great start for our first art we've seen here in tier tens. Sheep now moving he's, off the hill, pushing forward. He's certainly got the angle on on Bobby 301 301. I'm not entirely sure about Tasty Pastry, uh, and that it's going to come down to when they get lit. But he's in a great position to hit a number of these Ooh. tanks. And honestly, it's Bobby he needs to focus on. Tasty will go down soon thereafter as long as that support is taken out. Here we go, Tasty Pastry, 399 points of damage there. One more shot. Oh, the shot just bouncing there from Sheep. Not going to quite finish off that object, 140. He has a little bit of damage in a return to five. He's taking some, but there it is. Sheep taking down Tasty Pastry. And now Ping have three members against just, basically he's almost like just the one from Yo, but there are two there. Uh, Lost is at 28 points of health. Bobby below half, 798 in that T62A. And it looks like this is going to prompt now Ping just to kind of push up on the hill here. Sheep. Uh, slowly rolling up in that 5B, Bobby sensing danger, starts backing off immediately there, and Loss is just hanging out on the side. I mean, I guess he's doing what he he has to do. He, if, you know, if this uh, if Bobby can stall long enough, if uh, Ping doesn't put cat pressure on, which looks like they're going to be applying that right now with that E50, uh, then they just need to survive. So it'll be interesting to see how to, you know, kind of how this plays out. If Bobby can get some resets, maybe they can stall for but three minutes. Just three minutes and 45 seconds is such a long time. Uh, sh Ping should, should, I, I say, be able to take this. There is a very high chance. I mean, both of these tanks are pretty easy to take down. If you discount the artillery, they are uh, kind of close. Yeah. Obviously, sheep being the biggest difference there, but you can close out a, a heavy like that relatively easily if you have both of those mediums still alive. Even though in a DPM head-to-head, -head, there's very little room for error in that situation. But with uh, Tontinakis, have to learn all these names over yep. again. Yep. On cap, as you can see, not a whole lot of time left, and they're going to have to filter questionably by sheep, but if they take the long way, they'll be lit by Fluky and the artillery, so now Ping knows where they are. Oof. He's interested to see what they do with it. Sheep coming down. Fluky, he's not spotted yet, from what I can tell. And there's a chance. Oh, taunt! Taken he's down! He's going to shoot Bobby. Lost that love and feeling. Let's see if that artillery can take on that 62A. He's lining a shot up the shot from Bobby. Just missing taunt. And his E50, both just exchanging. But he has no idea what's about Green. to happen. Bobby picking it up. Oh. And there it is. Fluky oh. taking down Bobby with that artillery shot. And that is going to be ping. Claiming the first victory onto Mines, now increasing that lead three to two oh, against man. Yo. I just the M53, M55 is such a great artillery. Hmm. And the, so, uh, for those of you who may be familiar with with the older meta involving uh, GW Panthers from uh, WGLNA in the past, that's basically what the M53, M55 is. Oh. It's a nasty. Nasty tank that fires <laughs> relatively quickly and has a little bit of a turret on its artillery. Huh. So it actually uh, doesn't bloom as much when you turn side to side. Oh, that's great. Um, there's a little bit, a few more details yeah. uh, that we'll get into as we get uh, kind of more of these tanks uh, exposed to us. Like the Object 261 is probably another one we, we m could see, another artillery. And the uh, Batshat, the highest level of Tier 10 Batshat artillery is a four-shot artillery. Whoa! that we'll get into Whoa. Uh, the CGC, the, the Conqueror GC. That's possible as well. Okay. Again, we can go through the entire well, list. There's so many tanks to pick from now. Yeah. That's one of the other things is most of these most of these trees split into like two of every type of tank. Once so when there two, was yeah. one German heavy at tier eight. Well, I guess there, no, there was more than that. They split <laughs> early. That's a terrible example. But there's only one IS-3, right? Yeah. There's only one uh, tier eight heavy tank for Russia. Let's get into the premium tanks. I'm defeating myself all over the place. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, guess TLDR, what, guys? TLDR, there's a lot more tanks at Tier 10 than there were at Tier 8, all yeah, right? Yeah. Viable tanks. Bottom of the least. story, guys. Okay. Viable tanks. That's it. Uh, but now, now, one thing, though, about artillery is at Tier 10, it's it's the the reload timer is is ridiculous. Correct? I, I, when, when I was playing, I mean, you can get it for like 30, 40 seconds on some of them. 
Uh, for the artillery? Yeah, for like the well, two yeah, teams. some of them. Yeah, and then others. No one's gonna. No one's gonna be playing those. Yeah, <laughs> others, others, uh, others get even higher than that. Huh. So it just depends on whether it's worth it, and that's kind of one of the issues. With maybe like the Conqueror uh, gun carrier. It's got a great arc. I mean, it drops virtually from space. It's orbital. But it lo it, it's pretty slow, and it reloads for quite a while. But I believe we got another game rolling. That's soon. right, ladies and gentlemen. Ping versus Yo. Ping is now up three to zero. They're still attacking. Yo is still trying to defend. Let's get right into mines and take a look at now. Got. Yeah. Or attacks. Ping with an FE 215B, two E5s, 62A, an object 140, E50, and again, Fluky in the M53, M55. Yo with two E5s, two 62As, two 140s, and a T54. Lightweight. All right, now, the thing that we also want to talk about just, just real quickly um, is with the introduction of tier 10s, with the increased you know, damage, increased. Uh, decreased you know, mobility in some of the sense, but also increased vision. Uh, are we going to see, like, like, to mine, is there really anything we're going to see change as far as strategy? Because it looks like not. Nah, it looks like everyone's still all about that hill on one of the sides or about punishing that hill. There will be changes, especially later on, and especially as we get into the, the regular season. Okay. But for now, they are still trying to just get their feet under them right now. Ping! Taking the first little bit of damage. Shimbo in that 62A there. Not too much, though. And now Chai Sniper taking some shots in the back. Nothing connecting there. Uh, now, while they're just sitting here, you know, giving this, you know, Fluky a good chance again. He is in the artillery. He's in the yep. same spot as last time. He yep. can just start dropping these like it's hot. Oh, there's the first one right Ooh. on cue. Chai, extremely lucky there well, not why, to push up. That's why he's moving back and forth. And while we do have a minute, while things will change, it'll largely be little details or perhaps uh, some sort of brand new strategy. But for the most part, we will see modified older strategies because the concepts that made those still, still apply. Sure. It largely has to do with the time limits uh, and the format of, of essentially 7v7. That's okay. what dictates a lot of how this has to flow. The map itself has certain concepts. I mean, a lot of what we're going to see, say you watch the, uh, the Clan League, they do a lot of the same stuff just with more tanks right. in each prong. Right. So, just kind of how the maps are played, the concepts don't really change that much. Ooh. Right now, we're kind of just fishing for shots side to side. Fluky, so far, not connecting. And that could be the difference here. But again, we have another minute on clock, so there's still six left. Yeah. Just, just feels a little bit weird to me. <laughs> uh, Tontinakis over here in the E50. Make sure that Fluky in the M53 is safe. Plus, he's got some cheeky, nice little side shots to kind of keep Yo under control. But... They're not that great. Yo's only reason why they can't just barrel down the middle right now uh, is pretty much the FE215B sheep in coordination with the Object 140 Reaper. Although Reaper's position isn't that big of a deal. It's kind of a nuisance, but it's one of those places where in order to shoot at uh, Ping, or sorry, in order to shoot at Yo, they'd be able to shoot back at him. It's sure, the nature sure. of everything. There's nothing particularly great about it. Uh, but it is a nice little lock Ooh. position in the event that Yo pushes too far over. It's hard for them to get away from him. Andy Pan's taking a good chunk of damage in that TP4 lightweight. I believe that came from Fluky. I don't see anyone else who could have connected that shot. Possibly came from the lighthouse. Possibly came from Todd in that E50. But uh, I believe that was Fluky who took that shot back there. Nice shot indeed. What is the reload timer roughly on M55? On the M53, M55. Honestly, I don't know that one. Gotcha. I wouldn't know that one off the top of my head. I am not much of an artillery player, aside from uh, every once in a while, if I get shot by the 183, I'll load up the 261 and start shooting 183. Oh, with AP but here we go. Here comes the push. Yo, no, he felt possibly know that ping went around the corner, decided to push over the hill, and they're just going to try to take it with the overmatch right now. Technos getting extremely low. A couple more shots. He's getting surrounded, and he will be going down very quickly. The question is, will ping be able to come back from losing this tank so early on? Striker is going to pick that one up, and Al going to be picking up Fulcros, and then E5 there, and the rest of Yo pushing as a single unit coming around, taking down Shimbo now. They are all swarming these tanks, all of them on one. Let's see if this is going to work out for him. Fluky taking Bobby down. Shimbo going down on the side of Yo. Ping now with four members. Yo with five. Loving that feel. Uh, love that. Loving. Lost that loving feel. That's going to be a tongue twister. Is now doing his best. Taking down Reaper. Taunt taking down Chai Sniper there. And then E50 now taking some damage from Tasty Pastry. Fluky is trying to line up his shots. It's going to be difficult to see. But actually, no, the tanks aren't moving too much now. Tasty Pastry getting low. Overall, Ping though with the over two. 1,000 HP lead. 
coming into mines. It looks like they should be able to just clean sweep this one. Tasty pastry. One more shot. He'll be going down. Sheep picking that one up. Oh, taking down loss at level and feeling. And now Sheep coming around the corner. And Pans in that two before lightweight, just running for his life. Sheep picking up Striker again. Sheep, man, this is the guy. This is the name I'm seeing constantly. If I'm going to create a fantasy league, I'm going to be putting Sheep on my team if Ping is going to be playing because this guy is picking up kills left and right. Very fascinating to see what his damage has been done. After we're taught with the long shot, taken down and Pans. And that is Ping with another victory now, making it 4-2 to two, uh, against Yo. One more, and they will pick up this first victory and they will win 5,000 in-game gold. Now, right right in the beginning, David, something that you know, I was kind of I was fascinated with is they there was that little bit of a stalemate happening on top of the hill. Nothing was happening, no one wanted to move. Obviously, that does um, benefit the defense more than offense. Uh, but in that case, Yo, who was on the defending side, decided to push uh, over anyway. Why would they do that? Well, <laughs> probably because of the artillery. Okay. That's the best answer I can give you. It benefits defense unless there's an artillery on the other side you like, can't oh, stop. We got it. We and got then it's it only go. a matter of time until okay. he starts soaking up enough damage on you. Or you can bunker back, but then that gives strategic options to the offense. Um, it looks like they perhaps maybe saw a rotation they were looking for and then tried to dive on it. They did have some elements going for them, but it's just kind of a, not enough tanks in, in the right places. Mm. And honestly... Uh, caller, or sorry, Ping there didn't even necessarily respond in the best way possible. The E50 coming off the island was a little bit kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Okay. Something you maybe don't do. Uh, and, you know, perhaps he was told. I'm not going to criticize the player himself because I don't know the dynamics of it. But sure. if you stay on the island in that situation, you can still get the shots into a lot of those critical areas. Okay. And they can't as easily get to you. Though, when it push came to shove, he pretty much trucked a couple uh, <laughs> 1v1s Oh, in a row, I'm surprised he's still alive, but I'm not surprised that he had the highest damage of 3,600 wow. in the Tier 9 with two kills. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if we're picking people for fantasy, fantasy yeah. y you know, your selection of sheep isn't bad, but I I'm just going to go kind of with a blanket. Who's going to play the FE215B? Go, go with that. Probably he's going to be a good choice because it's one of the tanks where is usually going to be in a situation where he's just kind of going to bleed damage on people all day. Just all day. High DPM. Yeah. He's not really one of your main focuses. So he doesn't open up a lot of strategic options as killing the game him goes. most of the time. Right. Again, that, this, and that's is, for when this the is going to be an starts. adventure. Oh, this, I, I'm how looking pedantic forward. I am. I'm looking forward to this adventure. And I want to be 100% right when I say these things. It's okay. There's too many options. Hey, welcome to my I world. can't do it. This is how it works. It. Ladies and gentlemen, we are into our next battle. We have switch sides on Mines. Ping is now on defense. Yo on offense. Ping just needs one more, and they will pick up this victory. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. So, for Ping 999, as you can see, we have uh, two E5s, 250Bs, an Object 140, an E50. T55A over there for Yo. We have two 62s, or two 62As, two E5s, two 140s, and a T54 lightweight. All right, here it looks like Yo is doing uh, a similar thing that they did on defense, which is pushing all actually members to the hill. Not bringing artillery uh, here this time that I can see. Uh, and uh, Ping now putting a lot of members as well. That 50B staying in the back, taking a little bit of a different route here. Looks like he's just trying to look at that line. Look at that nice little line they've got set up there. And here comes the rest of the push at four ping on top of the hill. Now, David, keeping that 50B in the back, he's just used to just sit back there and just take shots all day, right? Just snipe, snipe, snipe. Yes. Yeah, so if, if Yo wanted to pour over the middle here looking for a quick overmatch or something, the 50B would light him up big time. Oh. And he does have some shots onto Chai Sniper's E5 right now. But now that he has been spotted and they know where he's coming from, that one did not penetrate. And the last one missed. Wow. Not a great clip coming Look at from this. Sheep there. He is going to be reloading, which opens up a little bit of an opportunity for Ping. What are you noticing? I was just saying, uh, yo, driving Ping off of the hill there. Uh, very aggressive. We, we just haven't seen that uh, so far. Uh, Ping having to actually back off, getting into seven positions. Chai Sniper Ooh. on his way up, taking a good chunk of damage there. But now the hill going over to Yo, and looks like they're going around the side. Maybe, I mean, we talked about no one is going to be going for that Eastern Cap. There's just so many ways to reset it. So do you think there's going to be flanking all the way through the spawn? Yeah, I mean, we're, like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot of the same strategies, especially at first. They're going to be re reworked just a little bit, but the concepts are the same. This is just kind of how Mines works. Gotcha. So it's not a huge change for everybody, uh, including the callers and including our fans and our viewers. Pretty much know what's happening here. They're going to shove all the way down, try and take out uh, Shimbo and Reaper. 
maybe not get lit up by the E5 and E50 on the way in. And it looks like they have enough HP and DPM. This move's even stronger than it was before. E50 is going to go wow. down. 50B's got to run now. Reaper's got to get out. It's all going to start swinging big time. There it is. Full Crow's going to be picking down Todd. The first tank going down for Pink. And now just this mob of blue heading over to take down Shimbo and Reaper. Shimbo, a Reaper looks like he got tracked there. A devastating time to get tracked. Indeed, some shots now coming out from on top of the hill. Full Crow's getting surrounded there by a couple members from Pink. But the rest of Yo continuing their devastation on the way through the base. Full Crow's taking Reaper down. Another tank falling for Ping. And it looks like Yo want this indeed. But a nice shot there from Flukey in that 55A taking down a member. Full Crow's is going down. Five minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. On to Pons. And that TP4 lightweight is extremely low. One more shot. We'll be going down there. Flukey taking tasty pastries out. Ping still. Want to claim this one through Bobby though, taking down Shimbo. Chai Sniper still on top of the E5, doing his best to take on anything. But Fluki with another kill. Andipons going down. Techno's now on top of the hill with Ald. And that E5 pushing up on top of Yo's E5. Chai Sniper there. And is now 4v4. Ping have the lead. That push from Yo that looked so strong in the start has fallen apart from them as they are down over 2,500 points of HP and even more as Fluki taking down Chai Sniper. That is at least three or four kills for that 55A. Just this match. And if Ping take this, they are going to pick up the victory. Love and lost that love and feeling at Object 140. One more shot, and he is going to be going down. There it is. Sheep picking that one up. Stri Striker and Bobby just trying to take down this 50B and this 55A. But they are sorely mistaken as Fluki takes out another one. And Al going to be cleaning up Bobby. And that is going to be Ping picking up the first victory of our Season 2 qualifiers here for the Gold League in our new 768 format. Congratulations. And they will, just like Yo, be going to the Gold League because everyone has been, or these, at least these two teams are guaranteed in. But it's the next match where we see the next decide. match is, yeah, who gets so, knocked out. But let's talk about what happened there at the end. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Shimbo was working some magic. How he, able to, <laughs> he was able to drive away from that and stay alive for so long, I don't understand. He bought a lot of time okay. and did a little bit more damage than he potentially should have been able to do, sure. given how many he missed when they were coming in. And then uh, Aldebaran and Technos, their two E5s, four ping, just drove right up the middle, shoved their way, took back control over the hill. Mm. And honestly, Yo just didn't collapse on them, get their shots in on target in enough time to capitalize on the moves they made. They were there, hmm. but as seemed to be kind of the pattern throughout a lot of their, their games so far, just didn't hit the shots they needed to hit. Sure. Man, Ping, though, congratulations to them showing their clear dominance, taking that victory 4-2, to two, or 5-2 to two against Yo. Ladies and gentlemen, that is match number one. That is done. Match number two, Caller Wanted versus TBD. One of these two teams is not going to be making it into the Season 2 Gold League. Stay tuned to find out who that is. We'll be right back after this quick.